Hello, this is a quick tutorial on a get start guide to uh, Dezo here. I haven't seen many of them for the latest uh, Dezo 4 we're on right now. Right here you see the latest uh, GUI. On the left hand side you have your metadata uh, histogram. You can easily change what you see on your left by hitting palettes up here. And you can just you know add things like advanced history, take away. This is what I like to see. I like to see uh, basically my metadata, a little zoom sample picture, and I got my histogram. Um, things I like to look at. So instead of looking at this big list like Dezo used to have, they've modified it so you have uh, this little guide up here. So you can just easily tab your way through exposure, details, uh, color, geometry, and then you have basically uh, your list of control points, and we'll get into that in a second here. And effects is really, really cool. We'll get into that watermarking at the end of your picture. It makes watermarking really quick and really easy. Let's start because this is just really about control points. Uh, Really quick, the library is your whole computer, um, so you don't need to worry about going to root folders or any of that BS. Just bring this up right here. This is the folder I'm looking at. Uh, when I, if you had seen it when I brought it up, you'll see a just a just a regular uh, like a, what do they call it? Just a breakdown, just like you would a little schematic of your whole computer, and just pick a folder. And right now we're at a, a folder of some beach shots I took. This is the entire folder scrolling through. This is a image that I have edited. The, symbol up here if i hold uh, my mouse over an image you can see uh, the metadata for that image once again all the parameters can be tweaked um, in the preference guide you can tweak how you want uh, these pictures to behave when you hold your mouse over it if you want and what information you want to see do you want to see these these ratings however you want to do that anyways i've selected an image here a little beach shot of a cute little house and what we're going to do today is go over different control points. You can see I have my highlights and shadows selected, the detectors. And so we can move through here really quick and uh, just do some, some basic enhancements. Uh, these sliders are, are super, super effective. Um, so sometimes I just like to use the buttons to get a little more control. But let's just do some basic little enhancements here to get us started on this image. And we'll look at the control points and how some of this stuff works. And we can throw just a slight curve on there really quick. And get ourselves going here. Uh, this is uh, smart lighting. It's on uniform right now because spot weighted would be more in for a uh, portrait, someone's face. Uh, but on a landscape picture like this with no one in it, we just have uniform lighting. You can adjust the intensity. You can adjust just the overall, how it affects, slight, medium, strong. Um, so we're just going to double click on that and it'll bring it back to the default setting. Clearview Plus is really, really powerful. If you haven't messed with that, something to tweak on. It really just, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a dehaze on steroids mixed with uh, contrast. And uh, it's really, really, really effective on a hazy image. You can see what it's doing to those back mountains there. If you look at the background, those mountains, you can see how it just really, really clears them up and starts to add a lot of definition. We're going to leave that off for now. We don't want to mess with that. And we'll just set it back to its default setting and leave it off. Going to hit it with some contrast. Uh, and the micro contrast is this little, this little auto, little magic symbol. It's on auto. I'll let it do its own thing. So let's get busy with what we planned to do here and start looking at, um, of course, you could, you know, you could keep going with all these global, global edits, uh, but that's not really what Dezo is, you know, best at. Uh, you can really get in here. We're going to go to local adjustments and have some fun with the control points. So let's check out the basics of a control point and we'll start uh, with these windows. It's a wonderful place to start. Uh, we want to say bring down the exposure values of, of these front windows so we can get some beautiful color out of that um, sunset. So what we're going to do is start by just uh, right clicking and uh, we can see that right now it you can select whatever you want. You, right. Do you have auto brush? We have an eraser. We have a new mask, reset, uh, regular brush, uh, gradient and all these all these can all do basically the same functions as far as your control points. Uh, they can all adjust all your perimeters. Uh, so whatever one you want to use is really up to you. There's no wrong or right way. So in this case, we're going to select so control point. So when I click again, it's going to in a, enter a control point. So we're going to put a control point in a strategic location on these windows because I'm keeping in mind that I want to 
uh, pull out my little ring of adjustment circle over as much as this as I can. So I'm just going to put it right here and pull out my little area of adjustment. In fact, I'm going to drag it kind of right over here because I can just get more of the area there. Just want to get maximum area here. I think I'll just leave it right there. Now, what happens is instantly this little uh, schematic comes up, your little heads up display. And with this heads up display, you can change literally everything uh, about that tonal value or the area you've selected. Uh, whether you want to exchange anything about the exposure, midtones, highlights, all that good stuff, you can do that independently. So now everything you want to change has been localized into just this tonal value right here. Let's start with the exposure. It'll just, it's very powerful, so you only need to touch it just a little bit. Just bring it down slightly, and you can already see it's going to work. It's bringing down only the values, the tonal values of these front windows, as you can see. It is not touching anything else. To show that, I will bring it down very drastically. And you can see only the tonal values of these windows are being brought down. Nothing else is, is being affected. So we'll bring that back up to a tasteful level. And we'll just leave it there for now. Now, if this is in your way, if you want to do something else, say you want to sharpen the windows, say you want to bring some color out of the windows, we can just go down here. And you got vibrance right here, and I'll just kick up the vibrance on those windows. So anything you want to do to to the tonal value you've selected within the control point can be done right at that time. If this is in your way, boom, click it, and now it's out of the way. Let's take a look at something else, and we'll go down to these other windows right here. And what I'm going to want to do is say I want to make the same adjustment. Say I want to, uh, let's just pull this over here, and I want to make the same adjustment, and that would be adding a uh, exposure adjustment. Now, what's going to happen is if I were to just uh, enter a control point right now, and because I'm just so stoked on the fact this is so easy, and I were to just start bringing this down, you can see that what's going to happen is uh, you're going to run into this is also going to start uh, bringing this down. It's going to affect this control point too. If it's... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm color. <laughs> My my bad, my bad. So if you go to exposure, you can see that if you bring the exposure down, it's going to affect this one too. And so you're going, hey, what the hey? And that is because uh, what we got to do before we do an, a new control point, we're going to delete this, we're just going to delete this, is we got to uh, add a new mask. Because until we add a new mask, all these control points are going to be select. Uh, con uh, connected. So are you with me still? So what we're doing is we added one control point. If I want to, I want to adjust the exposure on these windows, but what we got to do is add a new mask so that it disconnects this new control point from this control point. And that really is a beauty because you want to be able to keep control points connected because you want to keep, say you want to, you want to keep the same evenness and color values. Uh, so it all looks nice and even. And that's really the beauty of it is you can select whatever areas and control whatever precise areas you want and you can keep them all connected and move them all at once or independently. So however you want to get into your image or adjust it is totally up to you. So now we have a new mass selected. I'm going to move on in here and uh, put the control point, uh, desired radius of the control point. And I'm just going to put it in a nice location so I can get maximum area. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and grab our, uh, our uh, exposure value. Now you can see it's only affecting this front window area, not affecting this top area at all. I'm going to get it out of it. And so we can just adjust that to our liking. And if I were to turn it up. Totally independent, but we'll just bring it down slightly to our liking so we can get some color out of that sun. It's not necessarily good or bad, but this is how the control point works. And we can just click right there and get it out of the way. So just the same. Uh, let's try something like uh, auto mask. So if you wanted to auto mask, we could uh, right click new mask. And actually, I wouldn't really auto mask right here. I'd probably use a gradient. So we could just right click and a gradient and we can just go right here and bring the gradient right up like this. Now, this 
is the hard edge of your gradient and this is the the gradient itself that 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 starts to uh whatever taper off right there so if you wanted a hard edge gradient you could just bring this down and that just becomes a hard edge right there and if you wanted a, a soft then you can just soften it up and it starts to taper off just like that so if i were to use a gradient you could just kind of taper it right into the rocks there and you could just kind of bring down the exposure value of the front yard or the front sand there very easily and we'll get rid of that what i want to do is is start adding a, enough control points so that you can see how you can organize and, and how they can be organized later on so let's take a look this one also we'll right click remember new layer because i don't want this window perimeters to be connected to what i just did to the sand that would be horrible so new layer and excuse me new layer and we'll just go ahead and select control point and we can just bring this radius area uh, down and once again bring that uh, exposure down let's take a look at something else real quick oops once again I, I added a control point accidentally no biggie I'll just erase that and uh, I'm gonna take a look now look at these trees I haven't done any sharpening to these to this picture yet and I accidentally clicked the control point. I haven't done any sharpening to this picture yet. So, but and say I don't say I'm, I say I don't want to do any sharpening to the picture. Uh, I just want to do everything in a localized sense. I don't want to add any big global adjustment. So once again, we're going to right click, and we can just add a new mask area. This time we're going to just right click right there with the control point. We can just broaden it out to this tree. Once again, it's only uh, selecting or affecting the tonal values of this tree. We can come down here to uh, details, and I'm just going to selectively sharpen only the tree. So in Luminar, it'd be like uh, if you were just selecting um, like foliage enhancement. The, 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 better, the cool thing is that uh, I am completely, everything's independent. I can sharpen as much as I want, de-sharpen as much as I want. I can go to color. Uh, I can take the the uh, shadows if I wanted to raise the shadows in this tree, the contrast. Uh, maybe I just want to use some clear view, some clear view plus on the tree, see what it does. Uh, so all that can be changed independently. Let's just let's bring up the shadows on that tree, see if we can get some more detail in there in the in the leaves. And all it is doing is affecting the tree. That is. All is affecting is just the tonal values of the tree. It's sharpening the tree, giving us more definition. I'll just bring that up and you can see, hopefully, that those tree leaves are indeed uh, gaining detail and becoming much sharper. So let's take a look at another one. We'll come up here to these uh, mountain, this mountain range here, new mask, and we'll just select. Now, what we can do, let's, let's, let's do a new one. Let's do a auto mask right here. Now, auto mask, I want to show you what you can do is if you hit control and use your wheel, you can easily just use your wheel, hit control, what is it, on a Mac is command, and just uh, use your wheel and you can easily expand the circumference of your area. Now, on auto mask, it is the inside, that inside where the plus is, the darkened area, that is the area you want to worry about. As long as that area is painting in the uh, desired tonal range you don't have to worry about being sloppy so we're just gonna kind of paint and just we're just gonna hit that tonal just make sure I want to bring this down it's so huge so we're just gonna make sure that inside ring is hitting that tonal area and it doesn't have to be really neat at all we're just gonna make sure that inside ring is hitting the tonal area and you don't have to be precise at all we're just going to get that stuff and so now that that mask is applied we can just go down to uh let's see we'll go up here and we can go to say uh, where did clear view go clear view and we'll add some clear view just to those mountains And that's all it's affecting. 
Now, if you wanted to just say, uh, add the, or adjust the exposure um, of just those mountains, then we can just bring down the exposure of the mountains. And you can see it's not some artifacts right in here. And this is just basically where I didn't hit the mask. Yeah, that was a, you want to watch yourself with clear view here. So add that and then we can bring down the exposure safely. Get a couple artifacts there. And I think that was, I think that much better. So the artifacts disappeared. I would, uh, let's see, I can go in and I can basically erase there if I wanted. Um, what was my erase button? Let's see, eraser, and I can just like erase this area out if I wanted. Anyways, I added a new control point there, but let's take a look here. It kind of made a mess of that. And that was my, there's my auto mask. So we can go back here and you can see I was erasing my auto mask. Uh, I can just get rid of my auto mask altogether if I want right there and redo it, which is probably what I would do because I kind of really messed up this area here. But I think you see the point. Um, all my control points are now here. If I want it here, that window, graduated filter here. And then uh, that first control point right here. Super, super easy. Um, these, uh, once again, the, uh, the adjustments are super freaking powerful. They, if you, uh, if you go too far one way or the other, as you can see, you get some artifacts. Sometimes you have to give it a second to, uh, process everything and those artifacts, uh, go away or get resolved. But just like any other, you know, just like any other editing program, you can go too far with anything and you start ending up with artifacts. So, you can easily make that control point disappear. Anything else? Let's take a look at cropping real quick. It's so quick, you know. I don't know if, if people are losing Luminar or other things that, you know, has to think about it for some reason before it crops. I just select crop. I'm going to go to geometry and uh, unconstrained. And I can just bring this up wherever I want there. And just hit enter. And it's boom. What you see is what you get. Um, I'm looking at this image and uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? I think I want to uh, mess with the, I don't think the, uh, the uh, chimney's popping enough. So I'm gonna go, this is taking a little bit to process because I got OBS going too and this computer is not the most powerful thing in the world. So I can go to uh, local adjustments and uh, I'll right click and hit a control point in there because this is just, you know, it's pretty basic. I don't want to waste time masking a freaking chimney for 10 minutes. I, you don't have to, but I don't want to waste time masking a chimney for two seconds in this program. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to add, excuse me. Oops. The, by the way, that little button just shows you all your shortcuts. If you want to, if you want to hit that kind of convenient thing, that little question mark. But uh, I'll add my control point there. And let's just work on the chimney. So we're going to make the chimney pop a little bit. And we'll start with some exposure on the chimney. We can bring the exposure way up on the chimney if you want. And I didn't add a new con I didn't add a new mask, did I? So let's you know what? Let's control Z real quick. And get rid of this and we'll add a new mask. And then we'll add a control point. And then we can go to exposure. And yeah, there we go. Bring exposure value up or down. It's lagging slightly behind. I'm asking a lot of this right now, so we'll just give it a second. There we go. So exposure value can be changed. Uh, if you wanted to uh, get into the details, you can see more of those little bricks there. Start to bring up the sharpening on that. 
quite a bit too much there. But anyways, that is a quick look uh, at how control points work. And basically, you just kind of wrap your head around um, choosing tonal values and how you want to uh, strategically apply and set up all your, all your control points. Um, what you see is what you get. Uh, once you get used to that, it just becomes uh, super easy. So uh, any questions, hit me up. Talk to you later.